Well, as you can see, it's a lovely morning. It's mid-April. I'd love to be out on the bank fishing, but just like everybody else, I'm having to uh, work from my back garden because I'm on lockdown. So uh, mid-April is a time that I would be thinking about going to a lake and locating some tench. Now, a lot of you are now going to be thinking this is going to be another feature finding video, but it's not because in all honesty, I don't care what is actually under the water, whether it's gravel, whether it's silt, whether it's weed or whatever. I'm not going to spend countless hours with a marker float, a deeper, none of that with me. I'm just going to go to the lake, use my eyes and watch the water. The actual venue that I decided to fish is a typical gravel pit. It's not a big lake, it's about eight acres, a couple of islands and just like most other gravel pits it becomes really really clear the margins just shelve away and it often gets weedy now about 20 maybe even 25 years ago i did fish it quite seriously for eels and had i think i had 11 over five pound in the month of may the biggest was 511 so I w it was somewhere that i was familiar with i've been back a few times uh, but it was the first time that I was seriously going to go there and target tench. I do actually know some very, very good anglers that have been on there tench fishing and they said it was far from easy. And as a carp water, it's swell. It's got very few carp in it, very big fish in there. And I knew that it was just going to be a toughie from the start. So um, I set a few targets. I thought it'd be lovely to beat my personal best tench at 10 4 and if I could catch maybe six tench, maybe 12 at most that spring, then I'd be a happy man. So it was time to go and do some homework, get to the lake and find out or find where those fish were. Well, my first visit to the lake was very, very early one morning. Tench are very, very good at giving themselves away. They're very active in the mornings. Now, I'm not saying it's like first light, you don't have to be there before it gets light. But if you can get there at the crack of dawn when the birds are singing, give it about an hour and then they will start moving. And they're very distinctive in the sense that that big paintbrush towel, when it goes over, it causes a splash. It's not a noisy splash, but quite often you'll see lots and lots of white ripples around it. So my first job was to actually see if I could locate those fish just by looking across the water. So I went in the gate. I've got one rod with me, a rod and reel, and all I've got is a little lead, or a two and a half ounce grip of lead, uh, a flask of tea, and obviously my permit, just in case the bailiff came around. And I needed to get a nice vantage point on one end of the lake. There's two areas of the lake, and I needed to check them, check them both out. So I sat in the swim, and straight away, like most tench anglers do, they think if I see any fish, they're gonna be either patrolling down in the clear margins, or they're gonna be rolling up to about 25 yards out, or maybe around the margins of the island. And I hadn't been there that long, probably about 30 minutes, drinking my tea, mist on the water, no ripple, when something out the side of my eye caught my attention. And anyway, I looked again, and a few minutes later, another fish rolled. And at first I thought, well, they can't be tenched because they're too far out. But when the third one showed, I actually got up, moved a couple of swims to my left, sat there and just watched. And what I saw was amazing, as probably 25 tench just turned over, slapped their tail on the surface, basically saying, here we are. Now, as I said earlier, I'm not really worried what I'm fishing over or in. If the tench are there, I'm gonna, that's where I'm gonna put my bait. So I'd been there about an hour, and by then I'd already got a swim that I knew had tench in front of it. Next thing, and probably most importantly, is I need to know if I can actually present a bait to where those tench are. So this is where the rod with the lead comes into use and I just actually waited until a tench rolled and when it did I just cast at that actual area, landed it as close to where that tench rolled and just felt that lead down and there I was thinking oh it's just going to go down 
really soft in weed but as it happened it went down with a really good fud and the first thing I thought was brilliant I, I can't quite believe that so I put the actual line in the real line clip wound in had a little feel around see if there was any weed that there wasn't and then made another cast slightly left and slightly right of that first cast and on both occasions it went down with a big thud another tench rolled and I thought that's strange why are they actually out in the middle and I can only assume that they were there because that's where the food was and it probably was bloodworm looking in the margins there wasn't a lot of weed and weed actually produces lots of snails and shrimps and stuff so there was no need for those tents to come in they were still well out in the middle of the lake and that's probably where they'd spent most of the winter so straight away I was thinking happy days really I know where the tents are there's not many other anglers on a couple of carp anglers on but you've got to actually think of when you arrive there just in case somebody's in that swim or that area is tied up so I walked around all the way around the lake to another swim where I could actually cast to the same sort of area still clipped up and as it cast out I just felt the lead down and again it went down with a thud so there was no feature finding I'm, f I'm sitting there thinking I can just pull that lead out at the bottom it's a little bit silty that's good no feature finding the tench had told me exactly where to fish well as I earlier mentioned the lake is sort of two ends to the lake so uh, whilst I was there I'd taken note of the pegs that I could had cast out and found this this hard bottom where the tench was were actually feeding I was clipped up but I thought I'll go down the other end of the lake which is more popular with the carpers uh, just in case I needed to go there because the other areas were tied up and again I'm just sitting out there looking across the lake and on the far sort of bank I could see the odd tench roll so I thought I'll walk around there got in front of them and again these fish were quite a way off the bank they weren't in the margins 25 yards these were like 50 yards out so I waited until one rolled I've got the rod it's clipped up to the first swim cast out and just felt the lead down and again down it went big thud and I thought well this is really good because if that area of the lake is actually stitched up I can come here and if this is stitched up I can go there I had options so um, as you can imagine I, uh, I was back in the car driving home smiling like a Cheshire cat because I'm trying to locate tench on a venue as I said they normally show but it's so quite often takes two or three trips early morning to actually locate there but on this instance I'd actually been there done the job in a couple of hours nobody else had actually seen me doing it and I thought most anglers are going to get here and be fishing the margins up to 25 yards but I'm actually going to be doing something different so it was really time to go home get my tench rods get them rigged up and marked out to the right distance so when I got back there from my first session I was already ready and prepared well back at home it was time to actually get my tench rods wrapped up and clipped up to the same distance so I got a couple of marker sticks on the grass got the carp rod out that I'd actually taken to the lake and found the distance found out how many wraps it happened to be 10 and a half wraps so about 45 yards plus a rod length so 11 and a half wraps actually wound that in got my tench rods and just marked them out 10 and a half clipped up and then what I did right by the reel seat is tie a little bit of elastic an elastic stop knot as a reference mark did that with both rods actually in the hold all they went all the other tackle sorted it was really time to get back to the lake and give it a go well as you can imagine I was really kind of like chomping at the bit to get back to the lake I got my rods marked up they're all made up rigged up and ready to go and uh, I decided to return one evening and fish through the night not because I thought I was going to catch tension the night you rarely do in the spring but to be there nice and early in the morning get some bait out the night before and be able to like work the rods actually from dawn um, but things didn't actually go to plan because when I actually arrived at the lake there was one other car, one other angler on there actually and he was right in that first swim that I'd actually decided was my first choice 
Um, I had a little quick chat with him and he was actually a tench angler and he was fishing at about 30 yards out. And I thought, well, that, that's all right, because I'm going to be fishing a bit further out. So I just had a chat with him, went round to the swim on the other side of the lake, made a cast. I'd already said, if that's in his way, let me know, which it wasn't anywhere near him. And I really settled back, put some bait out and settled back for the night. Um, nothing happened in the night. And then I was up at the crack of dawn, looking across the water. And there they were, starting to show right over the same, that area. And I'm rubbing my hands thinking it's only a matter of time. I've got confidence rigs on. I'm using the bait that I'm just with my first choice bait. It's only a matter of time. On two occasions the alarm went, but unfortunately it wasn't my alarms, it was the other tench angler's alarm. And uh, about 11 o'clock in the morning I decided to call it a day. I went, went round for a quick chat and I just quizzed him, asked him if he was on. On, um, on the maggot and he said well I've got one rod on the maggot I've got one rod on another bait and um, he said both my tench came on the other rod so it just goes to show I had my location spot on I had fish over the area but even though I was confident in my rig and bait that wasn't actually what the tench wanted so next video I'm going to talk a little bit more about bait and a little bit about rigs so you can actually put all the pieces together and then learn a little and maybe take that into your, your tench fishing when you get out in hopefully three or four weeks time. Well I hope you like the video, I hope you've learned a few little tricks there. You don't have to go and spend hours and hours on a, on a lake trying to find features, let the fish do that for you. Um, next time we're, we're going to be talking as I said earlier about rigs and bait hope you like them if you do subscribe and um, any questions please email me at duncancharman at me.com and I'll try and cover those in the next video thanks for watching